Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom, and I am Paul Markle, your favorite professor. And today we're going to do part three of our three-part series, How to Defeat the Armed Citizen, or How to Convince the Armed Citizen to Willfully Disarm Themselves. Well, during number one, we talked about ignorance. Keep, you know, get the population as ignorant as possible so that they have to look to someone else to provide them, to think for them to provide them with the thought that they need for their daily lives. We don't want people thinking for themselves. That was number one, ignorance. Number two, distraction. Talk about distraction. There's two forms. There's the Hollywood filth and rubbish that you see at, on the newsstand next to the Walmart checkout. And then there are the social causes that you're supposed to argue with your friends over so that you will be distracted and not paying attention. So you've got that. So ignorance, distraction, what is the third one? Well, the third one, if you have escaped the ignorance trap, you're educated. You refuse to be distracted by garbage. Fantastic. How do we get you? Guilt. Shame and guilt. Well, how do we do that? Well, number one, any, if you're an armed citizen, anytime a firearm is used in a crime, rather than focus on the human being that actually committed the crime and the fact that what they did violated the existing laws. Someone takes a handgun or a rifle or shotgun or whatever and they murder a human being. What is the focus on television, newspapers, radio? Gun violence. Well, isn't murder illegal? Has murder not been illegal since the beginning of time? Well, yeah, but it's gun violence. So did murder begin with the invention of the firearm? Oh, no, it didn't. No, it. don't think that the term gun violence just is an accident. Gun violence is made so that you, that term is used to make you, the lawful gun owner, feel guilty. So anytime there is a, fire, a firearm is used as a crime is being committed by a human being, rather than focus on the bad person and the actions of that evil person, we will focus hard like a laser on the tool that they use to commit it. And why is that? It's to make you be reasonable so that you as the citizen won't fight for your rights. Because why? Because you're afraid that if you fight against it, then you'll be seen as unreasonable. Uh, now, what else can we do? Hmm. Well, we can manufacture some guilt. We can manufacture a situation that causes you to feel guilty for clinging to your rights, such as Operation Wide Receiver, which became Fast and Furious. Well, what is that? And what was that? It was a deliberately orchestrated plan by the Department of the Justice Department through its various agencies to funnel guns directly into the, illegally, into the hands of Mexican drug cartels. And it happened. And if one of our brave border patrol agents would not have been murdered by one of those weapons, we might not know about it today. But because it backfired in their faces, and one of our border patrol agents was murdered with a weapon that they deliberately allowed to be walked into the hands of people that they knew should not have been sold guns, should not have had guns sold to them. And my good friend Mike Deddy just wrote a book called Guns Across the Border. Yes? I tell you what. I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to put the link down there for you guys. But Mike Deddy uh, was actually involved in it. He was an Arizona firearms dealer who was approached by the Justice Department and the ATF, and they said, hey, look, here's what we want to do, good patriotic American, and this is going to keep the guns out of the hands of drug cartels. Well, it did the exact opposite of its stated intent. And if we, like I said, if there wouldn't have been for that one murder, you might not have known about it right now. But what it was that designed to do? That program was designed to guilt you, the American gun owner, into accepting more reasonable restrictions on your rights. Certainly, if you don't accept more reasonable restrictions on your rights, you want more people to die because you just don't care about people. So, the big three. What are the big three? How, to, how do we convince the armed citizen, how do we defeat them by convincing them 
to disarm themselves? Well, we do it by keeping them ignorant, deliberately ignorant. Number two, we distract them with all kinds of vapid garbage and social issues so that they're not paying attention to what's really important. And number three, if they've gotten past the first two traps, we guilt or we shame them. Nonstop, 24 hours a day, 24 hour a day news cycle, shaming the American gun owner for the acts of one lone criminal or two lone criminals. So don't buy into it, America. If you are a citizen, you need to understand that when that happens, when you see it, now that you've watched these three videos, you're like, they're trying to distract me. They're trying to guilt me. And guess what? I'm not playing that. All right, what is our book of the day? Our book of the day, as again, uh, we've recommended this previous, but previously, but as the, we are talking about being a dedicated American citizen, a true patriot, uh, we're going to, to recommend the book 1776 by David McCullough. Again, we'll put the link up for you guys down there. It's an excellent read. It details what we went through, what we as a nation went through in the year 1776 and how the revolution was not really... Uh, a done deal. There were a lot of things that were it was kind of teetering on the brink and we were able to make it through and become this grand experiment as a representative republic. So for all things student of the gun, go to studentofthegun.com.